In the final screencast of the tissues unit, we're going to combine talking about muscle tissue and nervous tissue. Uh, there's three types of the muscle tissue. Um, obviously, function is listed there for you to produce movement, and it's the movement that's a little different depending on which type of muscle tissue. Skeletal muscle is the primary type of muscle tissue in the body. It's the ones that we think of when we think of muscles. They're the biceps, they're the quadriceps, etc. in the body. They move the skeleton. So they're mainly the muscles of the body. Cardiac muscle is found only in the heart. It's the tissue that makes up the heart muscle itself. And then smooth muscle is widely distributed, but it's essentially part of the, of the internal organs, um, the muscle that would make up some of the internal organs and surround some of the vessels and the hollow organs in the body. Uh, this would... This would be the small muscles of the skin that, when they contract, they make the, the hairs on your skin stand up, etc. So what we want to do here with the screencast is take a look at each of the three types of muscle and give you visual clues on what to look for and brief characteristics of each type. So skeletal muscle, first of all, is what we call voluntary muscle also. It's under voluntary control. Uh, we're not talking about reflex movements that you might have of the body, but you can decide to move your arm, flex your bicep, whatever it may be. So skeletal muscle, like we said, is the main type of muscle. It pulls on, essentially pulls on the bones in the body. That's, that's probably the, the thing that pops out in your mind. Um, there are some other structures or some other characteristics as well. When you see it, when you look at it, um, these three characteristics are really going to give you the visual clues as to what you're looking at. That they are striated, they're multinucleate, and they are very long, yet cylindrical. So looking at these pictures, to hit those characteristics that we talked about, the small striations that are look like they are, well, oriented up and down on the screencast, those are the striations. Um, the striations, they're the alternating kind of light and dark bands, which is exactly what they are and referred to. Light and dark bands in the skeletal muscle are the striations. As you notice that um, as you look at the, the cells, they are pretty well parallel to one another. Again, remember they are long and cylindrical. They're long and they're shaped like a tube. Um, as well as you can see all of the dark spots that are here, all of those are multi, well they are nuclei, but each cell is multinucleate. The reason for that is that they actually, they actually come from what are called myoblasts, and as a, as a human grows and develops, those individual cells, they actually fuse together, but you're left with the ind individual and multi uh, multiple nuclei. Cardiac muscle, the characteristics are listed for you here, of course, it's involuntary uh, for the most part that your heart beats and it beats on its own and it's not something you have to think about. Um, the characteristics that you would look for, so again, what you would visually find is you would still find the striations, but the big deal here is looking at the, the branching and the connections between cells. We'll switch over to the, the view of the cells, and as you see, each of these striations are still there, kind of going in this direction, the alternating light and dark bands. You can see the intercalated discs that, they really help, the intercalated discs right there, they really help conduct an electrical signal across the heart when the heart contracts. But you can see how these cells, they aren't long and cylindrical like skeletal muscle. They actually branch into multiple cells or multiple branches as the kind of like the way you would interlace or, or fold your hands interlace your fingers between one another it's really kind of how this tissue looks but it is striated so the difference between the skeletal muscle and the cardiac muscle is whether the they are long parallel bands or whether they look like they branch Now the smooth muscle, um, you can take a look at the functions of the smooth muscle. 
but the visual characteristics that you would see is you, they are not going to have the striations that we looked at the looked at or noticed with the other two. Um, the big deal is if you depending on the view that you get, they will look spindle shaped. And before we actually take a take a look at the cells, they kind of have that flame appearance where they're very thin at each end and thicken up in the middle. So here's an idea of the spindle-shaped cells that I was trying to draw on the previous slide. Um, but you don't see any striations. You just see kind of the wavy pattern of these smooth muscle cells, which have that, that spindle form. Again, kind of like uh, I just think of a flame all the time, where it's really thin to a point on one end, but yet thicker in the middle. I know those are really great sketches, but you can see them much better here. And the last type of tissue is nervous tissue. It's in a class all by itself. It's one of the, of the four that are found in, in animal cells and in, in, well, in animal bodies and human bodies. Um, besides epithelium, connective tissue, and muscle tissue, there's nervous tissue. There's actually some different types of supporting cells and everything, but what we're really going to focus on is just a generalized neuron. A generalized neuron, a typical neuron, is pretty easy to identify. There's not a lot of real characteristic clues that I can give you other than it looks like this. It looks like a cell body, which is exactly what it is, the cell body of the cell. That's where it would be normal. That's where all of your kind of the normal type of cell, where all of the cell compartments and organelles are, but then it has all of these branches sticking out from it. And there are different classes, but we're just going to note, note this as a typical neuron, lots of branched processes, depending on the type that they are. Um, they either receive or they send a message. So these processes are the long things that stick out of the cell. You might hear terms called dendrites and you can hear a you might hear a term called an axon but we'll just collectively talk about them as cell processes as neuron processes so this one is pretty easy to just to identify all by itself it looks like it has some characteristics of some other types of tissue like connective tissue why because it appears that there's a lot of extracellular stuff here but you just need to be able to identify nervous tissue as a standalone all by itself